I am joined by George Mills, formerly of Adelaide United and Brisbane Raw. Thank you for joining me, George. It's, it's good to be it's good to be on with you, mate. Thanks for having me. First question: How did your love for football first start? Uh, I was very young, I think five years old. Um, I think it started. Uh, I think on my fifth birthday um, when I received my first football from from my father. Um, who who loved the sport growing up and, um, you know, uh, helped me sort of realise my my love for football as well. Um, so, yeah, since I started playing at such a young age, um, I instantly enjoyed the game. I fell in love with it. And, you know, ever since, it's been a big part of my life. Every kid as a child has like one or two favourite players who are just their absolute idols. Did you have any when you were a kid? If so, who were they? Uh, for, for me, my f- first first love in football was David Beckham. I guess um, he, uh, for me, was you know just the ideal footballer in the sense. You know, he had the he had the style, he had the the talent, um, and he played played for my f- favorite club. And ever since, I've been a big supporter of his and of Man United as well. Um, so I'd say David Beckham would be uh, someone that. I look to who who really made me fall in love with football. Chelsea are an absolutely massive club and you had the pleasure and privilege of joining them in 2009. How did that move come about? Uh, oof, from what I can remember, because um, obviously I was I was very young um, and you sort of don't get involved with the with the politics and, and, and everything at that age or well, you're not aware of them. Um, but uh, we had a, uh, I wouldn't say a friend, he became a friend afterwards, but there was a, a scout over from the UK. He was traveling around Australia and, you know, he's working within football here, you know, to kind of support himself. Um, and, you know, he's, he was a coach at the Reading Academy. Um, and like he, he'd taken a liking to the way I was playing um and because he was a young academy coach himself you know of a similar age group to what I was playing at um and I just after time he um he recommended that you know that we come over to the UK and you know at least you know not not to move but to essentially just you know have a look and see what the level is like and maybe just even experience like a training with a team you know it was very innocent um at first um you know there was no real intention of um, going over there and signing for a Chelsea or, or a Reading. Uh, so eventually we they invited us to come over. My my mum and I um, flew over and we uh, went there to experience, experience it all. Um, and it, it turned out that I did a lot better than maybe what we first thought. And um, Chelsea tied us in almost straight away. Um, after trialling at Reading first, um, but quickly realising that I was capable of a, of a higher level. Um, so they sort of like not Reading themselves, but the people that we were dealing with kind of passed me on to Chelsea. And after a session, that was it. Even though you, as you said, you were very young, did you feel the pressure of playing for such a big club like Chelsea or not? No, nah, not at all. Not at all. Um, you don't realise then, because um, you, you don't know. You don't know what to expect. You don't. Wanna, you don't even know what's going to come of it. Um, you know, you, you rock up. You're in awe of the the academy and the size of the academy. And when you go to Stamford Bridge and you see all the first team players around the training ground, because you know, even when you're in the academy, you know, you're very integrated with the you know the older the older age groups as well, and they sort of let you experience that side of things um and you're exposed to that straight away um but no there wasn't a pressure there's a lot of enjoyment i really enjoyed it um it was a beautiful place there's to this day i've never seen a f- football facility of the same quality um other than the ones already there um so yeah just it was incredible in your time in england you spent time with both chelsea and southampton Looking back now as a sort of older player and adult, what do you think the most important thing that you learned that stuck with you as a young player was during your time there? Jeez. Um, I think there's a couple of things. Um, 
one is the obvious, you know, you know, a lot of people, a lot of older players will say it and it's, you know, the hard work, but it's not, it's not, it's not just the hard work. It's like working smart, um, you know, identifying where you need to improve and put it into practice. And it can be a hard skill to, to develop, you know, just trying to identify that, but that's why it's important to listen to your coaches. And, and that's something I think a lot of players who progress, you know, they identified those things very quickly or others did it for them, which helped them, um, grow into the players that they have grown into um and the other other one is a you know self-belief i think you know knowing that you know when you're there you're already good enough you don't have you don't have anything to prove once you're there you're there you're good enough you're you're part of the part of the furniture so it's just about you know believing that every time you go out onto the field that you're not just worthy that you belong there so um i think a lot of young australians struggle struggle with this um not so much when they're playing in australia but when they when they step overseas they kind of go back into their shell and and kind of um the shadow of the player that they probably were here um and that's you know that's all part of mentality you know it's different in in, in every country it's it's different um and the kids there get brought up a lot differently to us so it's understandable it was in 2015 that we first seen you in the a-league what was it that made you decide to come back to Australia to play football? Um, the main, the main reason, or well, from my side, the main reason was first team football. The promise, the promise of senior football. At, you know, like you said, seventeen. I was about to turn eighteen, I think, at the time. Um, so it was a it was a promise from from Adelaide and. Um, say Adelaide mostly the coaches so Josep Gombau and Guillermo Amor um, at the time because that was the transition between the two coaches but they're obviously very good friends so they both made the decision to to bring me into the club and to give me first team minutes um, and it was quite un- uncommon at that time in the A-League for young players to play that consistently I mean there'd been a few in the early years of the A-League but as the A-League progressed you saw less and less young players playing all the time um, I think the only really one there was only one or two lads at the time um, I think it was Alex Gershback and Liam Rose from Mariners um, you know who were playing consistent games in the A-League at that time so um, it was important for me because you could go back to Europe and I did I had offers to go back to Europe um to go play for you know under 21 sides and, and this and that which were you know was still fantastic you know um some nice clubs in holland where i would have probably even you could probably say suited my style of football a lot more um but no it was it was a great experience um i'd like to get those senior minutes in at an early age and as you just said you did get some good senior minutes in at an early age what do you remember about your professional debut and personally how do you think you went in that match um, I think my first my first A League game was um, against Victory. Um, I think first game of the season. I come on for about ten minutes. Um, yeah, but don't remember too much. To be honest, uh, it was it was hard to find find your feet because of the the speed of the games. A lot different, you know. You're playing against great men, um, and they don't take any prisoners. They don't hold back. So you have got to be quick on the ball. You're not going to have that time to just you know, sit in and, you know, take as many touches as you like. So, you know, I held my own, but I think my real test was probably the few weeks later, my first start against Wellington um, at Wellington, which was a real tough game for us, um, which we lost pretty convincingly. I think it was 4-1 or 4-2 maybe. Um, And that was really tough. That was a big um, eye-opener for me to, to understand the level that, you know that's required basically because then it, like I said before you're there you already know you're good enough it's about then adapting to you know your surroundings and, and implementing the the manager system into your game so once I did that um, I started to get more and more games under my belt there's been some very very good players in the A-League over you know it's it's lifestyle it's lifespan particularly when you were there when you were a young player first coming through first getting those minutes who was the player that you thought, you know, this is the real deal, this is the toughest one I faced? Um, 
Ooh, uh, there was there was a few. There was there was quite a few, at, you know, and a lot of them at different clubs. That meant the I was going to say Man City, but the Melbourne City um, team at that time were a team that were really dangerous. You know, Varun Moy and Harry Navio and Bruno Fornaroli. Um, I thought those three together were absolutely dynamite. Like they were very hard to play against. And actually, it was one of my hardest games to this day was. In Adelaide against Melbourne City, um, I think it was a, we lost one nil, um, and it was I was playing the number six by myself because we were missing SIS through uh, a small injury he had, so I had to sort of run that defensive midfield role by myself. Um, and yeah, I had those three in a little triangle around me, and I'm, I was yeah, it was devastating. Like I held my own to be fair, like I played a good game, but it was it was tough. You had to be on high alert all the time. Um, so yeah, those those three, and there was a couple others as well. I think Guy Finkler as well from Victory was quality, and uh, Rolly Bonavaccio, who was at Wellington, I think at that time, was was a top top player. You were part of the Adelaide side that had this absolutely incredible run where you pretty much won, I think it was 10 games in a row to make the grand final and become premiers. So, for you personally, what was the feeling and the like spirit around the team at that time? Uh, it was, I was tell you what, it was better than um, not winning in seven games at the start of the season. Um, but yeah, no, it was, it was really good. It was, we're going into games knowing we'd win. It wasn't an an arrogance. It was just this belief that, you know, we will win today or we just won't lose. We'll get a point. We'll take three points. Um, you know, we had some, we had some good pros, you know, we had some real good experienced players and we had some good youngsters as well. Um, but I think the, the key thing was is that we were all on the same page um, and we we're all, you know, heading towards the same goal um, to, to, to be champions, finish first and to win the grand final. Um, so, the, yeah, the feeling was fantastic, especially when we secured the Premier's Plate when the season was still running. That was, that was really something special for us. And as you just mentioned, you did, in fact, win the grand final. You even played a part in that um, match coming off the bench. What was that experience for you like, the whole build-up to the grand final and finally stepping on the pitch and playing? Oh, yeah, it was, to this day, I just remember going out for the warm-up. Uh, I saw a tweet the other day, I think it might have been from Stefan Mork, um, saying that when he went out for the warm-up, like the, the noise and the goosebumps was was incredible. I saw it and I just it just triggered something, um, triggered a memory for me. Just I remember walking out of Adelaide Oval and we going out to warm up and the crowd was full. It was full already, the whole stadium. Um, it was so, so loud. So so loud. And don't forget, you know, we'd played, you know, at a start of the season against Liverpool, full stadium. You know, um, in a preseason game, which was very memorable for all of us, but that was different. You know, you know, people in the city really wanted it. They really wanted it. You know, then they hadn't had one before. Um, well, not where they've had when the double. Um, so you know, they hadn't had one before. So it was, you know, that that was pressure that day. That was that was the only time where you can really say is, yeah, the pressure was on, and especially when um, Western Sydney scored the equaliser. In the second half, you know, the pressure was on and um, not the equaliser, but they got one back. Um, but, um, you know, that really put a lot of pressure on us. And luckily we had the firepower off the bench with, with Pablo to, to give us some breathing space. And like you said, I came on for the few minutes that I did. But as an 18-year-old, you don't care. But the game time that you get in the grand final, you really don't. Um, um, I was just very good of my, of my manager at the time. And, um, you know... I did a lot of hard yards for him during the season and he also gave me, you know, a lot of opportunities maybe when he even shouldn't have sometimes, you know, over some older players and, you know, he showed that faith in me. So I think that was his way of, you know, saying thank you and, and you know, go enjoy yourself for the few minutes that we had left. So for you personally, how do you deal with that pressure before a match, like these big matches like Liverpool, the grand final? Do you have any superstitions or pre-match rituals or anything like that? No, none of, none of the sort. Um, sort of, you just sort of take it into your stride. I know it's, it sounds uh, probably not what people want to hear or probably what people think, but it's true. Like, 
you know, you're playing against Liverpool, you're playing against, you know, Western Sydney in the grand final. Just, just do your job. Just get out there and and um, just do your job the best best as you can. And, you know, you're representing yourself, you're representing the club, your family. And, you know, you just um, you want to do them proud and, and uh and, and that's where my head's at before those games is how 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 best to do my job. So after Adelaide, you moved to the Eredivisie with Fortuna Sittard. Um, how much did you know about Holland and the style of football and the club before joining there? I knew a lot about Holland. Um I spent some time in Holland as a as a young as a young kid. Um went there for a trip with um with some football coaches in Australia, they took a, a group over. I was the youngest of the group. The rest were about five, six years older. Um, but they invited me along because they sort of um, identified me as a, a young talent and they would just, you know, help me get on my feet in my career as a youngster. So I spent a bit of time at Feyenoid. Um, and obviously before Adelaide, I had offers from there with Sparta Rotterdam and a Feyenoid again. So, you know, I I'd had a lot of experience in Holland and um, my, my agent at the time was Dutch as well, even whilst I was in Australia. So um, I knew quite a lot about the Dutch system and um, and also a little bit about the club as well. And uh, the club with big history in Holland, um, who had a lot of, you know, financial troubles, but they found their feet again and, and they're another uh, good little club. So there's a big reputation in world football about the Eredivisie and its focus on technical skills and its development of technical players. Having played over there, did you find that reputation to be true at all or was it a bit of a different story? Yeah, oh, it's a, look, it's a, it's a good league. It's a good league, especially when you're first starting out, I think, um, as a young star. Uh, I would lean towards more saying if you're a young Dutch or Belgium boy, then it's a very good league, but it can be very, very hard if you're a foreigner, you know, and like, I don't have to mention names, but, you know, a lot of Aussies have gone there and it's been very hard to find minutes. And I found that myself because at the end of the day, you you can be good. But if there's a Dutch lad who's maybe not even as good as you, a bit less than you, they're going to give him the preference every day of the week because at the end of the day, they're looking after their own. And I think they're well, well within their right to do that. Um, you know, then obviously there's other factors like to get injured and this and that. So it, it can be tough when you're moving away from your home country to go somewhere else to to try and secure a spot in a, in a, in a team. It's tough. And you did move back to your home country this time with Brisbane Raw. Now, unfortunately, it didn't really work out. So in your opinion, can you like shed some light on why you think that was? Oh, I mean, it depending on who you who you speak to, it could be a number of different reasons. But you're asking me, so uh, look, it's hard to say. When I when I signed there under Robbie Fowler, um, you know, a lot of optimism going into the season. You know, we had a good squad. I thought, um, I think the recruitment was was really really good, and Robbie and um, Tony as coaches, I thought were fantastic. Also, and you've got to keep in mind, I'm saying that on top of them not even playing me. So, you know, that's the respect I have for them. Um, I did feature in the FA Cup against Sydney FC, which was which was nice. And I thought I did well in that game. And I, I, was, I was honestly expecting to get more minutes, but it was clear as the season started and sort of maybe round 10 that, you know, it's not going to be easy to break into this team because the team was performing consistently well um, with, with players who... I believed in my position were, were better than me at the time um, and playing well. Um, and, and that's the that's the truth to, to that season. I thought, um, I think when when things stopped for the COVID break initially, um, I, I went away and really worked on the things my coaches wanted me to, which was the phys- physical side of my game. Um, so I came back in, in top condition, but the only issue is that those coaches never came back, so um, didn't have a chance to um, to, to, to show them um, or for them to even give me the opportunity to put me back in the squad because we obviously we lost a couple of midfielders during that time as well, so it would have been fantastic for me to step in and, and to do a job, um, but it didn't eventuate, and, and, and that's football. Um, new coaches come in and um, they sign 
players who they want to work with. Um, so that's how football goes. I've had a bit of bad luck. Um, but you got to jump back on the horse and, and, and keep going. Um, that's what, a, that's what happens. That's not, I'm not the first, I won't be the last. Um, uh, of course I'd like to have seen myself in a better position at this point, because the idea of coming back to Australia was to build up some minutes to whether to better, better my position here in Australia or to move back overseas. I don't know, but, um, it was definitely not to play. <laughs> so last season you spent with Port Melbourne Sharks in the NPL. How did you like yeah. your time down in the NPL and how would you describe the level compared to what you found in the A-League? I thought it was a honestly a, a, a top experience, to be honest with you. I wasn't sure what to expect because I'd never never been involved in the NPL before. Um, I've had friends who have, have been and they were sort of advising me, but I look, to be honest, I had, um, I, think, I think it was three days to sign for a club in the NPL. So, because I, I kind of made the decision at Brisbane that I didn't want to be there anymore. You know, sitting there not playing wasn't really sitting sitting well with me. Um, not just because I wasn't playing, but mentally it's hard, you know, sitting there week after week not playing. So, um, I sort of made that decision to go and with, it, with three days left in the window, not many teams have spots left. But fortunately for me, that a club that I was kind of interested in because of the style of football they play um, had a spot available for me. So um, I went there and um, I was very impressed with um, the way that the manager had set up the team and um, the way that he, he, the way he set out his philosophy to the players and the way that we were able to, to put that into results. And what can we expect to see from George Mills in the future? That's a tough question. Um, I'd like to say, depending on, on where I am, but that shouldn't matter. No, look, for me, um, I think I know how I want to play football. I know the style of football that I bring. Um, I'm a, a player who who likes to play a little bit risky with the ball. You know, sometimes I'll lose the ball trying to play passes, um, trying to put balls into areas where it makes it difficult for defenders. Um, but ultimately, it's uh, I like to play, you know, sort of an attacking style of football and to dominate possession and, you know, and to really control the tempo of the game. Um, and whether that's, you know, in the A-League or in Asia and NPL in Europe, for me, it, it doesn't matter. As long as I'm on a football pitch playing each week, um, that's where I'm best, playing football every week, not um, sitting on the sidelines or watching other people play. Um, I've really enjoyed um, playing every single week. I do believe that the level I bring, I can still progress very far in the game. Um, as my earlier, or earlier part of my career shows is that I played at the top A-league level. I've had success uh, when I've played and when I was given the opportunity to do so. Um, I've dominated this season in the NPL for my team. So I feel another tick in the box. I've got games under my belt again, feeling fit and strong. So whatever's next for me, I'm looking looking forward to it, to be honest. I'll take the opportunity with both hands and just just keep putting in the odds. Well, fingers crossed we'll see you at that very top level in the near future. But thank you so much for joining me this afternoon, George. It's been an absolute pleasure. Oh, thank you for having me. Appreciate it.